Guys, I don't I don't need any Visine or any kind of Opticon A or any kind of dry eye medication. I just chop up a little bit of shallots and I'm good. Man, my eyes water from shallots more than onions, but you know, shallots and onions are similar. So this is the way I make the shallots that I put in the buckwheat. I just put a little bit of olive oil on them. Not too much, because I'm only making a couple just for demonstration reasons, right? And then you want to take some of this red wine vinegar here. Just put a, ever so little bit of that. Like maybe that much, maybe. I like a little more. You put ever so little bit of this, which is sherry cooking wine, but I would suggest you use real sherry. I don't have any, and I just want to show you. Very little, very, very little. But of course you need more if you're gonna make more shallots. I'm not making a lot of shallots, so. I'm just, I mean, this is probably like a quarter cup, if that. And like I said, just for demonstration. Obviously, if you're gonna make a cup, you wanna put a little bit more. I eyeball it, it's just for flavor. And then I got brown sugar, which is dark brown sugar here. And you just need a little bit of that now, like a pinch, like a pinch. I'm putting this much which isn't really a lot, but it's just to sweeten it up a bit with the vinegar. And then you kind of put it on like medium, that much heat, right? <laughs> I mean, this is not exact science stuff here that I'm doing. This is just a little video to show you how I flavor these. You also want to put a little bit of salt, not too much, just a little, just for flavor, just that much, like. I would say use a, a fourth of a teaspoon if you're going to make like a whole cup of shallots, but I'm not making a whole cup of shallots. I'm just making a little bit of shallots. So. <laughs> I mean, you know, I probably should have heated it up first, but that's okay. Just want to kind of move it around because, you know, shallots really quickly will scorch. It needs a little bit more oil, but you know, keep in mind, it's not, I'm not measuring this oil. I just want them coated, you know, coated with oil. Yes, a lot of people who cook say that using sugar on onions or shallots is cheating. And yeah, yes, it is cheating. Of course it is. And it tastes good and it's awesome and it works. Now something else you might want to put in your buckwheat kasha is garlic, and I always put garlic. Garlic is the deity of my kitchen. Garlic, I put in a lot of things. I love garlic. Yeah, it can mess up your breath. It can, but it doesn't mess up your food. You can always use some mouthwash when you're done. I chopped up this much garlic just for demonstration purposes. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. It's going to be mixed into the kasha anyway. This is only about a little over, maybe it's a tablespoon or so. But, you know, if you're going to make a half a cup of garlic or something, of course you're going to want more stuff. I'm going to pour the garlic into the shallots as soon as the shallots are done because garlic cooks really fast. Yep, looking good, shallots. Sure. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Totally. Yes. And they're getting caramelized by the sugar and also by the heat. And then the red wine vinegar and the sherry wine will incorporate itself in there and give it some flavor that's a little unusual. Perfect to put in the kasha. And right about now, you want to put the garlic in. Because garlic only takes a minute or two to cook. I mean, if that, you can, if you have really hot pasta, you can literally Throw garlic into the hot pasta and not have it on the heat and we'll probably cook for you. Just saying, that garlic takes no time at all. You do not want to put them in the pan at the same time because the shallots are definitely going to take longer than the garlic. And then you'll have burnt garlic, undercooked shallots, and things will just be a darn mess. Now, of course, at this point, you can put pepper. Of course you can. You can put pepper where you want to put pepper. It's up to you. You do you, you do what you want to do. 
I like pepper on this, so I'm going to add a little pepper. Then we're going to put the uh, kasha from yesterday, which this is, into the pan with these things. Break it up because it's been in the refrigerator. Before, so that's okay. This is the kasha I made in the last video, I told you. I was going to refrigerate it and use it for two different meals. I did. I, I have half of it in the fridge still. <laughs> that's for something else. This is just to put these garlic and shallots in for a little bit of flavor. Uh -huh. Yes, Pasha is messy. <laughs> That's okay though, because you can clean your kitchen. Your kitchen is washable, and so are you. And then we put about six or seven grinds of this kind of pepper that I have here. Black peppercorns. Mine is Trader Joe's. It doesn't matter what brand you use. You don't have to go to Trader Joe's and get it. But that's what I have. And yeah, any pepper is good as long as it's black peppercorns. I guess you could also use white peppercorns if you don't want to have the pepper showing. But this isn't like a fancy, known for its looks meal. It just tastes good. If you'd like, you can put a little more olive oil in. I don't want to use a lot of oil because I'm trying to make this a little healthier, but olive oil is a very healthy fat. And if you're going to pick healthy fats, you know, olive oil is one of those oils that you want. And olives are awesome, and olive oil is Italian, and I'm Italian, so that's what we use. And it's organic, too. Hey. I bought this at Target. And like the great comedian, local comedian Mitch says, I tried to walk into Target and I missed. Well, I didn't miss. I got my oil there, but I like that. I like that one liner. <laughs> and now see, this is done. This is already hot. This has been cooked already, so you just need to mix it, incorporate everything in there. That's all you gotta do. That looks like sand, right? But it's not. It's really tasty. And then this is a good base if you want to add bow tie pasta and some vegetables. If you want to buy some more ingredients like, um, oh, you can put spinach in it. You can just eat it like this, which is what I'm going to do. But yeah, you can make good meals out of this. You can even add, if you don't care about eating meat and you like meat, you can put beef broth, some ground beef, and just kind of mix that in. It's not going to be pretty, but boy, is it going to taste good. And you can put any meat you like in here, really. There's a lot of things you can do with this. I want to show you some more things. You can even use this mixture, mix it with ground beef and make some patties. And then the beef and the kasha mix with an egg. you got to put another egg. Like a meatloaf kind of thing, except half of it is kasha. So that works good. Makes a nice lunch. Oopsie. Let's get that out of here. I got shallot skin all over my kitchen. I got garlic skin all over my kitchen. Uh, but it's okay. It's worth it. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you that. I like the color of this. I do. Anyway, this is done. Let's turn off the heat. Let's get it off the stove. This is about a serving. It's about a cup. Maybe a little less. I don't know. This is a pretty small bowl, see? It's pretty small. This is what I consider a serving of this. Shallot with red wine, vinegar, olive oil, some salt, some pepper, some sherry, or cooking sherry if you don't have real sherry. Real chefs use real wine. I'm a real chef, but I don't have any real wine. So yeah, I don't drink that much, so I don't have that stuff around my home. That's okay, but remember that sherry wine vinegar will add a little bit of salt to your meal, so you don't want to over salt it if you're going to do that. Same thing with salted butter. If you use salted butter, you'll want to reduce the amount of salt you use in your food because it's going to add a salt to it. You'll have too much sodium and it's going to taste overly salty and you do not want that. If you use unsalted butter and if you use sherry without any salt in it, then you'll be fine. You can use your right amount of salt. I would say a fourth teaspoon is plenty. And remember, I made several cups of this stuff. This isn't all I made. But anyway, this is all I'm going to eat of it because this is a serving and I'm going to share it and maybe make a meal with it and Kevin will have the rest and there's still some in the fridge for another meal you don't want to overdo it but it is a good grain it is healthy it is gluten free so yeah that's perfect I mean I can eat gluten but a lot of people cannot so and we know that so that's good for them it's better than having like say wheat wheat groats or something so 
I like wheat berries. I might cook some wheat berries. These are alternatives to pasta and rice. And that's what I'm trying to do. Plus, it has a lot of vitamins in it. As you can see, on the box, if I can find the box, if I can find the ingredient panel, this has potassium, 220 milligrams of potassium. You see? It also has six grams of protein, and that's good, you know. It only has 10 milligrams of sodium on its own. Of course, I've added more. But anyway, yeah, that's about it. Um, oh, I dropped the box on the floor. Luckily, it's pretty much empty. Anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. I know that not everybody wants to watch the cooking stuff, but this is just a quick, easy cooking thing right now. I am going to improve upon my cooking videos. I'm going to show you something fancier later. I might use my air fryer, which I have not used yet. I have not used my air fryer. My air fryer is new. I got it for Christmas. Yeah, you know, hey, I like it. I just, I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet. What I really wish I had was a food dehydrator, but I don't. I love freeze-dried food. But anyway, that's fine. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a great night. Have a great day, wherever you guys are in the world. And also, um, I want to shout out to Nicholas Park. Wonderful channel, wonderful man. He seems very friendly, very nice. He's really working on his weight loss. He's trying his best, and I like that about him. He seems like an awesome guy. Subscribe to Nicholas Park's channel if you get a chance, if you want to, and if you're interested in seeing a cool guy from the South that wants to lose weight.